At some point in your Laravel development journey, there will come a time where you need to test that jobs are being dispatched to the queue in the correct places. And Laravel provides us with tooling to do this using the queue facade and the fake method. And once we fake the queue, we have a number of methods available to us to make assertions against things that have happened on that fake queue. We can assert that nothing was pushed. We can assert that some number of jobs were pushed, that specific jobs are pushed onto specific queues and so on and so forth. And using this orders can be shipped test, I've re-implemented it here in a very naive way. Uh, we fake the queue, we make a post request to an orders endpoint with some data, first name, last name items. We assert that an order was created and we then make sure that the ship order job was dispatched to the queue. Now there's nothing funny going on here. We are processing an order. We are dispatching the job. We are returning a 201 response. The ship order job doesn't do anything. It just assigns some public properties for demo purposes. But if we jump back into our test and we run this, We've got a passing test, great baseline for a refactor. Just on this, I would have a test like this anytime I need to make sure that something is being dispatched, just so that we can make sure that things are flowing through the application in the way that we expect. And then I would create these next tests in a similar fashion. Now, Laravel also gives us the ability to do these truth tests where we are passing a closure to the assert pushed method and then making assertions against the type hinted job to make sure that specific data is passing through those jobs. So if we come in here and we replace this with a closure and uh, call that job, we can now make assertions in this truth test on the job property. So we assert that the first name is Michael and the last name is Dorinda. And let's add another one here that the count of job items is two. And let's just create another one in here. Uh, three, three, one, All right? So if we run this test, we should have a pass. The order was submitted, this is great. Now, what can happen in our tests, in our application code, we're writing these things to make sure that things are correct. Say we don't scaffold this out with a factory correctly and we've only got one job here. Now, this test will fail as we expect because we've broken it intentionally. But if we look at the error message, it is really, really unclear why that's failed. We just get that the truth test has failed. We failed asserting that false is true because something in here is not correct. And what I've found myself doing in the past He's commenting out this block. Sometimes there's five or six of these here and then bringing them back one by one until I find the thing that has failed. So what I would typically do in these situations instead is to just return true, right? Get our baseline back. And this is gonna pass, it's not doing anything. And this effectively is the same as assert, pushed, uh, and then ship order, plus, right? What we started with, these two things are effectively identical. Now I'm using PEST if you're using PHP unit, the process for this is very much similar. We're going to make expectations or assertions on the job inside this closure. So we're gonna say that the first name uh, should be Michael and the last name should be Dorinda and the items to have count of two. Now this, is still going to fail, but you'll notice something different. We are now getting an explicit message. We have failed asserting that actual size one matches the expected size two, and we see what specifically has failed. And this makes debugging these failures in our test assertions much easier. We now know, okay, this is where the failure was. So we can go back in here and test, we can run the test again, and we get the pass. Now, if we make a typo, here, we get a failure, but we now have an explicit message that tells us what has failed, how it's failed, and importantly, where it's failed. And then we can go and trace through our code to see what we need to do. Now, if we get this to pass again, one thing you need to be uh, careful of, and one thing that has bit me on innumerable times, if this doesn't return true, right? This is a void operation. So if you do not have the return true there, you're gonna get a failure and it's going to make you lose your mind. So make sure inside of these things, like I said, do it first so you don't forget, make sure you're always returning true.